Hello guys, Dan here from Dan's Tech, and in today's video guys I'm going to be showing you how to set up RAID on Z170 and Z97 motherboards. Now, although I am kind of focusing on them too, this tutorial will kind of work for none of all Intel motherboards that do support RAID. Now, what I'm going to be doing in this video is not showing you how to set up RAID via the BIOS, but how to set up RAID in the Intel setup uh, configuration utility thing, whatever it's called. To my understanding, all Intel, all Intel boards have this as soon as they support RAID, and me showing you that is, to me, that is actually a simpler way to setting it up, and it's a more universal way, so that's what I'm going to show you, and yeah, I'm going to demonstrate setting up RAID 0 and RAID 1 with two 2 terabyte hard drives that I've got uh, just kind of there. I have recently gone through the uh, manual for my motherboard, so I am kind of kind of know all the kind of knowledge it's got. You know, it's all kind of like whizzing around it in my head, so it's all kind of fresh, and I'm going to be bringing you guys, um, yeah, a full tutorial, and also going to be going over um, how to change the side mode, which you need to do that before you can actually um, go into the BIOS and start messing with all the RAID settings. And I'm going to be showing you some benchmarks at the end, showing you what performance increases or decreases you can get by putting your drives in RAID 0 or RAID 1. And now, without further ado, let's get into it. So peeps, to get started, the first step is to enter the UEFI BIOS. To do this, hit the F2 or delete key to gain access when you see a motherboard's splash screen. If your motherboard has a built-in speaker, press the key when you hear the beep. Now once you're into the BIOS, navigate over to the Peripherals tab or a similar in your BIOS and locate the SATA configuration options and change the SATA control mode from the standard AHCI mode to RAID mode. After this, navigate to the last tab and save and exit. As your PC boots, you'll see that the Intel Rapid Storage Technology splash screen will appear just before your motherboard's BIOS options. You want to press Ctrl and I before booting to enter the utility. Now the Intel Rapid Storage Technology ROM allows you to set up and manage all the RAID volumes you've set up. To get started, you want to select New Volume and type a name for the given volume, in this instance, RAID 1 Volume. Names are limited to 16 characters. After this, select the RAID level. RAID 0 will increase performance, while all other options can have a slight increase or slight decrease in performance. However, will give you fault tolerance, meaning if a single drive fails at any given time, you won't lose any of your data. Now, RAID 5 will be unavailable if you have less than 3 disks, and RAID 10 will be unavailable if you have less than 4 disks. Once you've done this, choose the hard drives that you want to be part of the volume using the spacebar, making sure you select the correct disks as it'll all be wiped before the RAID array is set up. Selected drives are highlighted with a green arrow to the left of the drive's SATA ID. Now after you've set up the drives and the type of RAID, set the volume capacity based on your preferences and press create volume. After the volume has been created, you'll see this in the list of active disks at the top of the screen. To demonstrate setting up RAID 0 for example, the principle is the same. Type a name, select the RAID level, select the two or more disks, then the strip size. 128KB is recommended for RAID 0. Type the capacity and then press create volume. For guidance, as for deleting a volume, this is as simple as navigating to this menu and pressing delete on the RAID array. As for disk failures and checking RAID array health, this screen and the Intel splash screen will also show that information when your PC boots and will notify you of any degraded arrays in need of a disk replacement. Now do note that RAID 0 failure will usually result in data not being available in the operating system or your operating system in general not being available, meaning that your PC will not be able to boot as them drives would have contained the operating system files. All other RAID failures will generally result in slower performance until you replace the failed drive, of which can be done easily. Now when a disk fails, you simply need to enter the Intel configuration utility to identify the SATA port of which the hard drive is connected to, and then you can go forward and replace the drive. You'll also need to let the utility know that you've replaced the drive and mark it as replaced so that it can begin the rebuilding of data on the array. Once you've done this, inside the Intel Rapid Storage Technology program in Windows, you can select the Rebuild option. Intel have many support articles on this to guide you through the process, so I won't go heavily into that piece of software. Finally, as for the performance in RAID 0 and RAID 1 with the two Seagate 2 terabyte hard disks, the RAID 0 read performance was 329 megabytes per second, with the write performance being 327 megabytes per second. On the other hand, in RAID 1, the read performance was 186 megabytes per second, with write performance being 156 megabytes per second. Just for some reference, with the two hard disks not running in any kind of RAID, the average read was 201 megabytes per second, with the write being 190. 4 megabytes per second. I wasn't able to test RAID 10 or RAID 5 of the two discs as you need more drives. However, you can read about the typical RAID performance online. So peeps, so yeah, that's how you set up RAID. Now, as you've seen from the benchmarks just at the end there, um, RAID 1 in general 
it, it's kind of hit and miss in terms of uh, in terms of performance increases or decreases. But what you are getting is data redundancy by having an additional drive where all data is copied over to, which is all good. Uh, and then with then with RAID zero, you do get the performance increase, of course, but you do not get data redundancy. And if anything, you're asking for um, errors or say data loss. Not necessarily asking for data loss, but you should expect it a little bit more. So frequent backups should be a thing if you are going for RAID 0. And yeah, people that set up like RAID 0 on like loads of SSDs or loads of hard drives, you do need to do backups very, very regularly because you can lose data very, very easily just because you've got more drives that can fail. Anyway guys, thank you for checking out this video. If you've enjoyed it, you know, do feel free to click the good old like button. And if you do have any questions or any kind of comments, do post them down in the good old comment section and I get back to you in a, just say, a good amount of time. There we are. I do try and get back to all the comments that I do receive on the channel, which to be honest now, it's uh, quite a lot. <laughs> there we are. But yeah, thanks for watching guys and yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.